Sorry, Jack. Chucky's back. What up? It's your boy T Bear and Reaction. Today's Films Friday. Time for the meat and potato of Films Friday. That is none other than the Dead Meat Kill Count. And we're back on the Chucky recount, though. Last, the week before that, I did the Chucky reboot. And as in, as in between um, intermission, you can say, in between um, bonus bonus as well after I got finished doing the recount of the first three child's play role. So now we get into the Chucky Chucky the Chucky series as you say say the after the after the uh after the uh child's play Chucky series role two started when the recount of Bride Chucky became on nineteen ninety eight when we get introduced to the newest character of the Chucky series, Tiffany, who from what I've seen from the series been part of Chucky been part of Chucky's life been talking all his, all his life before he became the doll while he was still Charles <clears throat> while he was not other the serial killer Charles uh, I forgot his last name Charles or Charles Lee Ray anyway so anyway without further ado let's check out the Bride of Chucky kill count recount the movie came out in 1988 and it was also a return of it. And it's also a return for Chucky as well, too. You know, a lot of horror movies making their return. Term at the brief hiatus, though. Halloween was one of them with H two O, and then and then Chucky was the other with Bride of Chucky, though. Freddy and Jason would not make their return until Freddy versus Jason. So let's let's check out Bride Chucky recount. Let's get it. Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today that shirt is kind of tough and cool. Give me the power, like the part we got the like the, the power glove for Nintendo. <laughs> We're looking at Bride of Chucky, released in 1998. The box office failure of Child's Play 3 put a seven-year pause on further mm -hmm. Chucky sequels. Of course, didn't help that slashers were seriously struggling in the early 90s. But what I tell you, I told you right. I said that plenty of time was some some uh, Kill Count reaction how horror was going through. A dark a tough time in the 90s in the in in the middle late 90s until what well, he about to say then came scream which yep. revitalized the genre and sent studios scrambling to make hip horror movies for teens and young adults yep there you go see it i just said that i he i've been saying for a long time that uh from watching these movies like well watch the Leatherface uh movies the three and the uh fourth one they had and um a couple other ones came out in the mid 90s though that the horror genre was struggling in the mid -night, in the, mid, the, the early to mid nineties for a good minute though. Even like the last Freddy wasn't the best. Some of the Jasons wasn't there at their best as well too. Even some of the Halloweens as well too wasn't at their best as well too. Until Scream revived it all, and then the rest was history though. Like a good, it was like a good amount. I mean, well, the only ones that was like killing in the cool was the one off like people on the people on the stairs. Uh, um, there's some other ones that that was like one up in the ninety in the nineties and you know some it well, was some one that didn't do good as well too. But anyway, let's keep going. Universal dusted off the old yellow good guy box and asked creator Don Mancini to make a modernized iteration of the killer doll. Mancini was happy to write something different and take things in a new direction away from Andy Barkley. Inspiration came to the franchise's producer and Chucky designer, David Kirshner. I was in a video store and I, I saw a copy of The Bride of Frankenstein and I just thought Wow, that would be great if we were able to create a bride for Chucky. For a director, Kirshner and Mancini chose Hong Kong filmmaker Ronnie Yu after seeing his movie mm -hmm. The Bride with White Hair. Five years later, oh. Yu would go on mm -hmm. to direct Freddy vs. Jason. Brad Dourif returns as the voice of Chucky, who's now joined by his old girlfriend, Tiffany Valentine. Mm -hmm. Mancini specifically wrote Tiffany to be played by Jennifer Tilly, since he was a fan of Bound and Bullets mm -hmm. Over Broadway. She is a fantastic addition to the franchise, giving yes. a fan favorite performance. Yes, she is, and she's doing her thing on this series though too i didn't even watch this week's episode i got fond time to watch it hopefully but yeah it's that cemented tiffany's status as a series mainstay chucky and tiffany are unfortunately coupled with a pair of protagonists who i find much less endearing as i've said many times before jade and jesse's bland relationship is a chore to watch while it doesn't bother me quite as much as it did five years ago it's definitely the worst part of an otherwise fun movie but whatever the movie's not really about them this film is my first romantic 
lead, and it's part of an overall strategy to launch me into the leading man status. As with most late 90s horror, Scream's influence is all over this movie. While Chucky had always been ready with a quip or two, Bride brings him up to speed in horror's new sensibilities. This is a full-blown comedy, with tons of meta jokes about the series' history and references to other horror movies. Mancini wrote it as a farcical romantic comedy, full of misunderstandings, kind of like, say, Three's Company. Bride also massively ups the gore, bringing us a whole host of creative kills far bloodier than anything we saw in the original trilogy. That's why its title is so different. This is the series moving on from its roots and officially becoming the Chucky show. We're no longer in Child's Play. We're of Chucky now. Mm -hmm. Well, of Chucky and of Raycon, because yep, they're today's go. sponsor. Now, I know what you're thinking. James, you know- See, I was kind of, I wasn't sure to call it the of Chucky series, but he did because that lot of is, is something of Chucky. The Raycon sponsorship. If you like Raycon so much, why don't you marry them? And to that I say... Do you, James, take these Raycons to have <laughs> and to wear comfortably thanks to their optimized gel tips with eight hours of playtime and 32 <laughs> hours of battery life I'm telling as Chelsea, long James. as this sponsorship shall last? I do. And do you, Raycon, take James to have and to be worn by in noise isolation or awareness mode, as long as this sponsorship might live. <laughs> they do, and they've got great sound quality. I know, and they're backed by 50,000 five-star reviews. <laughs> With the power vested in me by this priest robe that I bought on Amazon, <laughs> you may now use the tap function to play, change tracks, or change volume. Chelsea's my wife. Exactly. Raycons are already half the price of other <laughs> premium audio brands, but you can get yourself a pair for another 15% off by going to buyraycon.com slash deadmeat. Will twice the dolls mean twice the kills? Guess it's I do or die, so let's get to them. The movie begins in the Kill Count prop closet. Hey, Ben, could you please put that shit back in their bins? These evidence locker shots were originally written into the court scene cut from the beginning of Child's Play 2. Their reuse here fits perfectly with Bride's more meta tone. A cop named Officer Bailey is sneaking out some evidence to sell to a sultry-voiced collector. Hello? Hey! I'm on my way, and don't forget my money. Not very good role model behavior from Bailey. And before you know it, this ding-dong says hello to a throat mm. slit that puts an end to Mr. Bailey's wonderful life. If you're gonna get murdered, though, might as well be by Jennifer Tilly in a Matrix getup. Huh, never thought to put the nail polish mm. on the filer. What a time-saving life hack. Wow. Tiffany Valentine lured Bailey here to take his lighter and reacquire a pancaked Chucky, who's actually looking pretty good considering how he died in the last mm. movie. She welcomes him back with Louis Armstrong and Rob zombie. Well, hello, Dolly. Fuck, I love this opening. The living dead girl, the sexy Tilly, the stitched together title card. You instantly feel the series being modernized for the late 90s. That modernization extends to Chucky's new look, acquired in Tiffany's trailer of misfit dolls. She gives him the Toy Story 2 treatment and stitches him back together, Frankenstein's monster style. The stitched up face might be Chucky's most iconic appearance, and one that many fans associate with the character since it was literally everywhere when this movie came out. Ask anyone who worked at a Hot Topic. If only this movie could be all Tilly all the time. Unfortunately, the main human characters are our well-off Juliet, Jade Kincaid, and her trailer park Romeo, Jesse Miller. Jade is played by Katherine Heigl, last seen on The Kill Count in Valentine. Oh, These yeah. star-crossed idiots have to sneak around because at Jesse's home sweet hell is her uncle Warren Kincaid. Warren's her legal guardian and the town's police chief, and he don't like Jesse one bit. They have to use their best friend David as a faux date when they're going to prom. David made quite an impression. I think Warren's in love. Yuck. <laughs> Not my type. The in-sync reject-looking David is gay. And I know, blah 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 woke dead meat. But it is worth noting how uncommon it was to have casually gay characters like him in the 90s. Even though there are some light jokes about it. What are you gonna study? Theater arts. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But on hey, yeah, R.I.P. John Redder, by the way. Athletic scholarship, right? Playing hockey? 
figure skating. He's still just a regular guy who's incidentally gay. I like that Don Mancini, who is also, also gay, gay, was able to write this character into Sean a popular Pickle franchise back then. Seems The reverse beard doesn't work though, and the kids are pulled over by Warren's lackey, Officer Norton. The kids call him Needle Nose because, well, look at him. The crooked mm -hmm. cop keeps the kids in the rain until Warren shows up looking like the Great Pumpkin. The police chief knows how to deal with a problem child, and since Jesse didn't follow any of his eight simple rules, he condemns him to eternal blue balls. You fuck. But you won't. Not <laughs> Jade anyway, not anymore. Warren Kincaid is played by John Ritter, a childhood favorite of mine because of Three's Company. I watched a lot of Nick at Night. He was last seen on The Kill Count as adult mm -hmm. Ben in the It miniseries. Kiss me, fat boy. I'll never not be sad that he died so young at 54 know, in 2003. Ritter was I still remember I still remember that day like I'm like half sleep waking up hearing the news about him dying. This is while he did the uh I forget what the name of the series he did though, um before he passed away. Uh, what was the series he did before he passed away? Um A Simple Rules, like and then the next year you hear he had a heart attack, died of a heart attack. I'm like, wow. But anyway, keep going actually supposed to be in Child's Play 3 as a security guard at a Chucky factory in a scene that was ultimately cut. While this unfortunate couple is getting broken up, Tiffany's trying to get her mans put back together. Best way to do that is with a restoration incantation. Ooh, ooh, we're dumb. Hey, yep. Give me the power I beg of you. Ah, there's her problem. You need voodoo for dolls, not for dummies. With the spell seeming like a bust, she's stuck with her current boyfriend, Damien Baylock, named after two characters in The Omen, the satanic child Damien and his evil nanny, Mrs. Baylock. Damien's played by the late Alexis Arquette, Aww. whose siblings David and Patricia are also Kill Count vets. Mm -hmm. Mancini based the character's appearance on Marilyn Manson and even offered Manson the role, but the musician turned it down. Glad he did. Fuck that guy. Damien's the wrong oh, guy shit. for Tiffany, but he still tries to impress her with murder? Oh my god, you really did a number on him, didn't you? I forgot you? what his name before he became Alexis, but yeah. R.I.P. to Alexis, though. The robber, okay, yep. Before he became Alexis, he's Robert, yeah. Oh. <laughs> what did you use? Was it really bloody? Did he scream a lot? She soon realizes the snuff photo is fake, but hey, maybe he can pass it off as a bootleg mankind trading card. Oh, Tiffany Lord. yearns for her old boyfriend, the one who really killed people, and she might be having a Dumbala after all up since Chucky reappears with a lightning flash. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? Damn, Damien, getting right to it. Oh. Tiffany gets kinky with Damien and his Dothamirian tattoos and tosses Chucky in for a three way play pal play date. A new toy is one way to spice up a stagnant sex life. Chucky remains inactive at first, but I mean, how you about to not get roused by this? Damien keeps dissing the doll until Chucky asserts his dominance with an exorcist head spin and a proclamation oh, about his penis. It ain't the size that counts, asshole. So what you do with it. Chucky tears out Damien's lip piercing in a painful yeah. moment that always stuck ha, with me. Ha, he smiles Damien while catching up with his old flame via pillow talk. Hi. Hi. How you been? Okay. You? Peachy. Eventually, his little doll butt does the job, and Damien stops struggling, gone the way of McMurphy. This is a long-awaited reunion for Tiffany, who was dating and killing with Charles Lee Ray before his body swap ten years ago. But turns out, he wasn't as serious about their relationship as she was. This doll didn't want to settle down into a dream house. You weren't gonna ask me to marry you? What are you, fucking nuts? Tiffany's oh, yeah. domestic ambitions leave Chucky crying to Palma with laughter. So the scorned lover this is, takes- This they, I guess it's also explaining why the, the, the way they are in the series. ...advantage of his size and locks him away in a widow baby quip. He can come out when he starts acting more mature. I love these scenes where Jennifer Tilly acts opposite a doll, and she enjoyed doing them too. The good thing about acting with a puppet is that they never get into your life. <laughs> it's so short. The next morning, yeah. Tiffany hauls out a steamer trunk with Damien's corpse stuffed inside. Mm. Jennifer Tilly provided that black dress and those Gucci shoes from her own closet. Mm. Her trailer park neighbor is none other than Jesse, who helps her out and deadlifts the dead body into the car. She tries to snag him up as a new boy toy, but Jesse stays loyal, meaning she's stuck with a colicky killer currently cribbed. Tiffany! Where the fuck are you? She decides to taunt Chucky and give him some company, a bride doll complete with a Jennifer for Tilly oh. voice box. With this ring, I be wed. She's having a good time teasing him, but later, Chucky uses the doll's ring to escape his Pee Wee Penitentiary. Mm -hmm. Tiffany's having a bubbly soak and watching this movie's inspiration, Bride of Frankenstein. We belong here. 
<laughs> that movie's Miley. tragic ending ain't the only thing cryworthy. Cause here comes Chucky, there looking like he's walking through an automatic doll wash. He knocks the TV into the water, Dang. shocking Tiffany <laughs> his inverse origin to her gothic counterpart. Chucky finds the whole thing exceptionally whimsical. I get it. Bubbles are fun. You will not be shocked to learn that this death was another recycled Mancini idea. The original script for Child's Play had Aunt Maggie dying via bubble bath electrocution. Mm. It wasn't used then, but you know Mancini. You just can't keep a good idea down. Mm -hmm. Chuck voodoos the way he doo-doos with an incantation full of ionization. I'm, I'm mad they showed the last the last brush came out because she came out all slip and then fell back down. <laughs> It transfers Tiffany's soul into the bride doll, a new look she is less than pleased with. You son of a bitch! What have you done to me? Chucky lets her know they're bound together now, and if she ever wants to be tall enough to ride a roller coaster again, she'll help him find the Heart of Dembala, a magical amulet that serves as this movie's MacGuffin. The Heart of Dembala was included in the original Child's Play screenplay, but it was ultimately cut and its scenes were lost to time. Bride of Chucky retcons it back into the mix, and onto my set, and claims that Charles Lee Ray was wearing it the night he became a living doll. One look at the footage in Child's Play shows that that's not true, but true. whatever. Whether we complain or not, it's still gonna be canon. No matter what! Now the amulet <laughs> is buried with Ray's body in Hackensack, New Jersey, and it's the only way they can transfer their souls into human bodies. All right, let's go. Oh, sure. I'll steer and you can work the pedals. We're dolls, you dope! Bride of Chucky takes place, I believe, in Lockport, New York, meaning these dolls are gonna need a ride to get to Hackensack six hours away. Tiffany calls up Jesse and asks if he can transport some dolls, no questions asked, for the princely sum of a thousand dollars. Jesse agrees, desperate to elope with his police barricaded paramour. Tiffany gets ready for the road trip with a Joan Jet makeover set to Blondie. Barbie, eat your heart out. Good thing she had those doll-sized boots and fishnets hanging around, huh? Could use some tips from Chucky when it comes to playing possum, though. Just act natural. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say act naturally fabulous? Just like with Chucky, the Tiffany doll was described by Mancini in the script, drawn and designed by David Kirshner, and built by Kevin Yeager, returning as puppeteer coordinator. Hey. The Tiffany doll had to have all the same capabilities as Chucky, but in a smaller body, requiring more sophisticated, scaled-down technology. Jesse grabs the plastic partners and swings by to pick up Jade, where we learn he has no idea how far a thousand bucks will go. I can put a deposit on an apartment, I'll get a job, I'll help put you through college. Motherfucker, this ain't the 1950s. I've got to agree with Chucky here. I think I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> Still, they're sappy I'm sorry bullshit. Where he, I'm trying to figure where he's from, too. He's been on, he's looks familiar. Um, the Nick Stable. He looks very familiar. I can't think of what, though. I'll let y'all let me know that. Tolerable, if it means two new fresh bodies for Chucky and Tiffany to transfer their souls into. The kids go inside to pack, not noticing the police acting fishy around Jesse's mm -hmm. van. Chucky's ready to remove the roadblock with an old favorite, but Tiff reminds him that this ain't the OG trilogy anymore. For God's sake, Chucky, drag yourself into the 90s. Stabbings went out with Bundy and Dahmer. You look like Martha Stewart with that thing. Who the fuck? is Martha Stewart. Lord. His second choice, a hammer, is called Predictable by Tiffany, calling back to how he already mm. used it as a weapon in the yep. first film. Tiffany encourages creativity, so when Warren comes back to plant some drugs in the vehicle, the dolls lure him to the front and use the airbag as a spring to fill his face full of nails. I love that little death twitch. Why does that look so familiar? That's meant to be a reference to our old pal oh, Pinhead, Pinhead, but the jokes never quite landed right for me. Oh, Speaking of me, uh, when are you going to stop redoing old episodes and finally finish my series? Oh, yep. When you make better movies. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Fair enough. The dolls here are the most expressive they've ever been. Daddy. This was the first time they had a computer system that allowed them to pre-program the doll mouths before shooting. That way, they'd match the pre-recorded dialogue the same way in every take. This was a huge time saver, freeing up more puppeteers to focus on other mm. things. Though it looks like they still had the late Brock Winkless and that headgear get up to do oh, any necessary on-set mouth movements. And now, whatever I say, Chucky says. That's right, Brock. Both dolls had several versions with different heads that could be swapped in and out. Even with the new innovations, they still required teams of seven to nine puppeteers, especially when it came to walking or crawling using the cable versions. It's a very difficult process with just one doll, and when you have two and you have 15 people, 
that have to crowd around a small space, it is very difficult. A lot of the sets had to be built on risers five feet up, which was especially difficult in Tiffany's trailer. With the wiring and plumbing needed for all the special effects heavy scenes in there, production designer Alicia Keewen said it was more a work of science than a set. The dolls clean up their mess before their fleshy counterparts return, but there's another problem. Officer Norton, who pulls them over near a crowded parking lot. Jade tries to appeal to Norton's humanity, only to find that he has none. You seem like really nice kids. It's nothing personal, or at least on my part. But the money. <laughs> Damn, Jade, Lord. can't be throwing hands with mm. a cop in public. That'll get you all sorts of suspicious glances. Jesse sends her inside to cool off, but is similarly incensed once Norton finds the planted drugs. Shit! Shit! Outside of the doll mm -hmm. antics, that is hands down my favorite part of this movie. It once again falls on Barbie Shit. and Clyde to get this Shit. show back on the road. So Chucky grabs Tiffany's stolen lighter and baby crawls his way to Norton's car. As the officer radios into the station, Chucky stuffs a burning flannel into mm -hmm. his fuel tank. Aw, oh, damn it, Chucky! He crawls back, pausing only to flip off a stoner on his way to dinner with Patrick Bateman. Rude fucking doll. Norton barely has time to smell the gas before he's incinerated in a fiery explosion. The flaming wreckage goes everywhere, but it doesn't kill anyone else. Not even the dude inside this phone. Whoa! Goes. Slow motion shows this poor stunt performer ducking out of the way. The surrounding bystanders are quick to accuse Jade and Jesse, so they peel out, leaving a pile up of primary colors in their wake. These supposedly in love couple immediately suspects one another of being responsible. You don't think that I had anything to do with that explosion back there? Didn't you? No. To be honest, I was thinking the same thing about you. That thousand bucks gonna cover bail too, dude? Jesse gets a call from David, who tells them the cops have them pegged as natural boring killers. And because Chucky dropped that stolen lighter at the crime scene, they've been tied to Officer Bailey's murder as well. Their newfound fugitive status doesn't stop Jesse's plan to elope, so he drives to a true detective-looking church in Niagara Falls, which, looking at a map, is the opposite direction of New Jersey, but okay, can't stop young dumb love. What are you doing? Do you trust me, Jade? Of course I do. My ass, three minutes ago, you were accusing him of murder! Jade pushes mm. her suspicions down and agrees to get married. And while the two recite their vows, Chucky and Tiffany reconcile. Tiff, I'm sorry for everything. Well, I guess I can't complain, I mean. <laughs> I always wanted us to spend more time together. They're interrupted by a cop in the box, mm. since Warren's not as dead as they thought. If only they had noticed the lack of kill graphic. Chucky thinks that Three's company, so he slings mm. his blade into the police chief, killing him as Jade and Jesse say I do. Talk about signing your life away, wow. am I right, boomer humorists? A true classic never goes out of style. That was good. Bride of Chucky was Jennifer Tilly's first time voice acting. Mm. She'd of course go on to do it many more times, including as Bonnie in Family Guy. If oh, there's anything Bonnie. I can do, there actually is. Could you collect my mail forever? I'm leaving Joe and moving to Europe. I didn't sign up for this. She and Brad Dourif spent three days recording their lines prior to the rest of production. Mm. Mancini had the idea to put them in recording booths facing each other so they could bounce back and forth nice. and occasionally improvise. Both of them seemed to love the experience. You look like Martha Stewart with that thing. Oh, what the hell? I need the exercise. The newlyweds retire to a honeymoon motel where they touch their faces and watch a news report on their supposed killing spree. In the absence of any other information, these Kids have to be considered mm. armed and extremely dangerous. Detective Lieutenant Preston there is played by Lawrence Dane, last seen on the kill count as hell Bloody and happy man, birthday, birthday to me. me. Preston says that one of the lovers might be unaware of their partner's oh, murderous he died. tendencies, he died this prompting year. more March. suspicious glances between the now married couple. With trust issues this deep, that ring ain't gonna work as a band-aid. All of a sudden, a pair of honeymooners from. burst in from the adjacent room. These sexy swingers are Russ and Diane, the latter played by Janet Kidder, Margot Kidder's niece. They're Ooh. looking to join the party, like, you know, in bed. But Jade tells them to clear she out. Look, Not a fan she looks like her she looked like her aunt too. Oh no no cab. She looks just like her aunt though. Did, and then her aunt pass away, I think. I think her aunt passed away recently too, uh Margo. I think her yeah, I think her aunt did Lois passed away, yep, really in 2018. But yeah, she looks just like her aunt.
a state of affairs. They do, but not before Diane nabs Jesse's wallet, which does not go unnoticed by Tiffany. The dolls sneak into the other couple's room while they're having a sloshy waterbed love sesh. Mm -hmm. Tiffany paves the way for more female killer dolls by shattering the glass ceiling with a champagne bottle, raining shards of mirror down into the couple's <laughs> bed and bodies. Water death bed, the bed that wets people. <laughs> the gory grand gesture is enough to completely win over Chucky. I love you. And he nabs right. Diane's ring finger for Lord. a fireplace proposal. Will you be my bride? Uh -oh. Oh, Chucky. No, it's of Chucky. Now, a doll marriage, that's one thing. Many a young girl has held such a ceremony. But to christen the marriage, that's entirely different. Chucky's got to be like a Ken doll down there, right? I am anatomically correct. Come again now? Where was that machine in the good guy factory? And wait, you're telling me this doll who was sleeping in Andy Barkley's bed had a little plastic package the whole time? <laughs> that makes his line from the first movie even worse. I have a date with six-year-old boy. <laughs> no! <laughs> Tiffany takes advantage of her Bay's anatomy and they have a sex scene shot in the language of a rom-com with just a hint of butt crack and some tasteful silhouettes that I'll still have to censor since YouTube's such a prude. Come on, YouTube. Yep. Even when the sex is safe? Have you got a rubber? Oh. Have I got a rubber? Yeah. Tiff! What? Look at me! I'm all rubber! <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Tilly improvised that line about having a rubber, and Durif came up with his response on the spot. Like I said, they had a lot of fun recording their lines. Well, they look like when they have fun. The looping, David and Dom were saying, well, you know, they'll just drop below frame and have doll sex, and I... I said, oh, we should make noises. And so me and Brad Dorf were in the recording room making all these little doll sex noises and it was so much fun. This whole scene is a great example of how game Jennifer Tilly is to do weird stuff, both as a human and as a doll. Her commitment gave this franchise new life that propelled it into a second act, a raunchier act that required all of the crew to be on board as well. And we built these little tongues that'll actually come out uh, and dart around a little bit and exchange a, uh, you know, a touch or two. A housekeeper played by Kathy Najimi finds the watery carnage the next morning. Mm. Unable to hocus pocus this mess away, the Sanderson sister acts scared and her scream sends Jesse and Jade on the road again. David arrives in a jump scare, having come to see them after they each called him the night before, whining about how they think the other one might be a killer. Hey, wait, why is David riding with them on this trip now? Did he walk to the motel or take a taxi to Niagara Falls? Because of their twin sister suspicions, David figures that neither can be the killer. Oh good, you two can trust each other for a few whole minutes again. The good vibes end when David delivers an amazing line read, Oh, something really stinks in here. And finds Clifford the big red body. He grabs Warren's firearm and Jesse and Jade immediately accuse each other again. Fucking just shoot them both, dude. After they pull over, Chucky and Tiffany finally reveal themselves. Nobody move! The, ah, uh, surprise! Freaks out David so bad, he wanders into traffic and gets to his final destination by a passing set my truck. Damn, that boy popped like a human water balloon. The dolls force the couple back on the- You got that right about Final Destination. You, you just saw the first one. That bus- I remember watching that first one watching that bus kill. I'm like, how the fuck anybody get splat that bad from getting hit by a bus? Jesus, I got school so fast, but jeez. Road ...and make introductions, reintroductions, and meta jokes. Uh, how did you end up like this? Well, it's a long story. It sure is. In fact, if it was a movie, it would take three or four sequels just to do it justice. Mm. Jesse finally understands after like 12 or 13 double takes. They trade in Jesse's van for a less conspicuous RV, whose owners we see have been killed off screen Damn. and unceremoniously stuffed into a closet. Tiffany makes herself at home on the range stove and prepares Jade's body for her soul housing, giving her a monster high makeover. Unsure of how else to get out of this situation, Jesse recalls some motherly advice that Tiffany gave him earlier. Never take her for granted. It's like my mother always used to say, a woman spends all day slaving over a hot stove for a man, the least he can do is the dishes. He uses Tiffany's reverence for her mother and decides to stir up trouble in paradise. She's not much of a housekeeper, is she? <laughs> Tiff? Those uh, dishes aren't gonna wash themselves, you know. Chucky takes the bait and makes one demand too many, and the ensuing argument quickly turns personal. Take it from me, honey. Plastic is no substitute for a nice hunk of wood. 
well, depends on if it's got batteries or not. The domestic dispute gives Jade the opening to knock Tiffany up and into the oven like she were a witch from a mm. fairy tale. Jesse follows suit by knocking Chucky out the window, but a bullet spray causes him to drive the RV off the side of the mm. road. Great vehicle crash here. Call me simple, but I love when cars go boom. Tiffany escapes extra toasty <laughs> like Chucky at he the did it for the original me. film. He did Jesse it for me. manages to intervene and save his, uh, oh, I guess wife? Never really thought about how they're married now. A loose wire sets off an action movie explosion that hurls Jesse away from the RV. He survives, but sees Chucky forcing Jade to carry him to the cemetery. Jesse chases after them with Tiffany in tow. She is not having a comfortable time. <laughs> <laughs> At the cemetery, Chucky shoots the state medical examiner, digging up his body because of its connection to the murders. Talk about a graveyard mm. shift. He forces Jade to exhume his bastard skelly body and gets his hands on the bling that's gonna make him a damn bala. Jesse arrives with Tiffany and puts his gun up to her head, turning her into peanut butter baby. They have themselves a good old-fashioned hostage exchange, during which Tiffany regrets her taste in men. Why can't I ever get it on with a real good guy? Her hesitation is only compounded after the couples reunite. Catch me, Chucky. <laughs> Come on, Charles. It might be a bit overdone, but she still sounds like Jennifer Dilly. Chucky decides to go tiff for tap, but Jesse spins around and takes Ooh. the knife instead. The injury incapacitates him and allows the killer doll to regain control of the situation. We get our third voodoo incantation of the film, and since it's their grand finale, Tiffany wants to cap it off with a final kiss. And she means final kiss, since Jade and Jesse's flip floppy romance has inspired her to stab Chucky in the back. This bride's going Frankenstein in a big way. Oh, Chucky. Look at us. Don't you see? We belong dead. But as we all know, Chucky's resilient, so true to form, he springs back to life and beats down Tiffany with a shovel. A top-down shot shows us they're all mm. out. Doll fight! Doll fight. <laughs> During this down and dirty battle, which I can really dig, the duo was played by Debbie Lee Carrington and a returning Ed Gale. Chuck ultimately comes out on top and stabs Tiffany in the har. My mother always told me love would set me free. Get off my knife! Damn, Chucky, have a har. Jesse remembers that this is child's play, Bore! and putt putts Chucky back <laughs> into his grave. Lieutenant Preston arrives and stops Jade from shooting the possessed plaything, but she yoinks his gun, tradesies, and prepares to do it anyway. Chuck lets us know that there are more sequels to be had. Go ahead and shoot. I'll be back. I always come back. With one last quip, but dying is such a Bitch. The good guy is blown away, mm -hmm. his doll body sliding down to join his human body in the grave. At least that'll save the county on funeral service costs. Having seen the deadly dolls firsthand, Preston waves away this movie's conflict. Jesse and Jade? Hell, they didn't do it. Guess Roswell that ends well. He lets them go with nothing worse than a contradictory command. You two go on home and stay put. Well, which is it? Better let them know before they walk all the way back from frickin' Jersey. Preston stays behind and comes across Tiffany's charred body. The burnt up bride springs back to life for a last minute scare and goops the detective with a face full of blood before finally taking her last breath. Turns out Chucky's rubber wasn't protective enough and all that fire baked up a bun in the oven. It comes crawling out of Tiffany and the movie ends with the hell spawn attacking a screaming Preston for our final kill. How many people objected like, uh, to life during this unholy matrimony? <sighs> Let's find What's out. That, and this time, I'm ready for those killer dolls. Oh, what was that damn? Shit, where'd they go? I, what was that damn baby, uh. Baby, um, horror film? That's what that reminds me of. Not. Oh, fuck it. Hey, hey, stop that. Hey, you two, stop. Oh, 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 girls, get a room. Yeah. It's not my house. Uh, it's alive, yep. That's what it is. 14 like, people died like, in Brian, 10 men and 4 women giving us this father of the pie chart. Now, things are gonna get a little complicated. Chucky had six individual kills and three with Tiffany. I'll put them all on the point chart. An asphyxiation, an electrocution, mm -hmm. an incineration, two bladed kills, three gun kills, and a miscellaneous, which was David going splat. Now, Tiffany is gonna have her own point chart, although it will recount their joint kills. 
David and the RV owners they shot. On her own, she added three bladed kills, if you count the glass shards as such. Now, here's how their kills break down on an individual versus combined basis, and here is the continuing installment comparisons, Bride taking the lead by far. With a runtime of 89 minutes, we had a kill on average every 6.36 minutes. Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill has a bunch of options, but right now, I'm feeling it should go to Russ and Diane. It's so spectacularly violent and memorable, with the glass and water going everywhere. It's arguably the goriest kill in the movie, and it's enough to make Chucky put a ring on it. Dol Machete for Lama's kill will go to the RV couple, killed off screen and probably undeserving of it. I bet they were retirees just right. trying to road trip, you doll monsters! And Champion Chuckle for Funniest Part also has a lot of options, but I have to go with the line that has stuck with me the most for all these years. Rude fucking doll. And that's it. Bride of Chucky came out in 1998 and was THE Chucky movie when I was getting into horror. Its sequel would come out six years later and leave many people upset. I'll show you next week, but until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. On the next Kill Count. We've seen the invisible. <laughs> We've lived with the monster. <laughs> We've counted the count. Excellent. But now it's time to let our leg hang. Alright, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have half of that because this, this is actually gonna be part of a, 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 a um, franchise as part of their horror one as well, too. So, and that's not, now I'm thinking about I should include Invisible Man as well, too. But anyway, let's keep going. Head in that stupid big mask in this hot ass studio. It's okay. You finish my movies when you have time. Or All right, cool. But anyway. And there you have it. That's uh, Bride Chucky. Next week, we'll put on a new poll. Poll going on as well, too. And then we got that. We'll continue the, the Chucky, uh, the Child's Play Chucky Kill Count Recount with, with the uh, <sighs> also regrettable seed of Chucky. But other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T-Bear signing off. Well, love.